Nicely done. Thank you. Sorry, it's taking me a while to get back here. That's all right. No, you know, in the, in the, inside this album jacket, there's a dedication to your mom. I want to read it. It says, you write, Mom, thank you for fully supporting me doing music now, even though you were totally against it for the first 22 years of my life. Yeah. Um, what did your mom want you to do? Uh, she wanted me to be just probably like any any other international students to just go abroad and study business or, or something that you can graduate with and then you can find a good job after that. With my father, it's doctor or engineer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stu yeah. yeah. So, Careers like that. Yeah. Professions like that. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and w so 22, so just a, c a few years ago, you were able to change her mind. What finally changed her mind? Um, I think it was when she first saw me playing live in China in 2010. And that was like in front of 200 people in my hometown. And these are all my loyal fans. Um, so they came out and my mom was there and she saw everybody was singing my songs. No by no, word by word. Um, and so, yeah, and then she, that's, that, that's probably when she realized that my daughter, my daughter really has something uh, going on here with music. <laughs> did, you, did you really always know that this is what you w wanted to do, that you, this is what you were meant to do? There's always like a, a part of me, like really deep inside, that uh, know clearly that I love music and I could not live with it. Uh, sorry, I could not live without, without it. it yeah. um, that um, I can do this better than anything else that I can do. I can, I mean, I was good at math in high school and all that stuff, but I just, in my heart, I know like I can do music better and I will be happier if I do it, do you grew, music. You grew up in the city of Harbin, China. What, what kind of music were you exposed to there? Were you, were you a musical kid? Uh, it was just mainstream pop. <laughs> and when I was growing up, uh, I think that's when um, like Michael Jackson and Mariah Carey, Celine Dion, uh, these major artists, their music got, uh, uh, should I say, imported mm -hmm. to China. Um, so for uh, English songs I was listening when I was little, those are the kind of English songs. And of course there's other uh, Chinese artists that I listened to when I was growing up. So then you, you come to, uh, your parents and your mom sends you to, to Vancouver to uh, boarding school. Mm -hmm. And you famously uh, end up at some point, I mean, you do well in school, but you end up using some of your tuition money to buy a keyboard <laughs> and actually take some time off school. Did you feel, feel guilty about that? I did, because um, for five months, um, I, I didn't go to school. Uh, but I didn't tell my mom. I just, but I figured... Um, I'm not spending that much of tuition for that five months. Uh, and I know in my heart that buying an electronic piano would keep me sane. So I just, okay, I just counted. Okay, so that's like $3,000 and that's two, two courses. Because I was an international student back then and it's, and it's like 1500 per course. <laughs> so uh, uh, $3,000, that's two courses, a tuition fee. So I just bought the keyboard of piano. Uh, I don't have a lot of time with you here. The right before we went to air uh, about an hour ago, um, I said, "How are you dealing with all the attention?" And you said, "It's good, and it's also hard. It's yeah. tough in some ways. I mean, you're kind of getting what you wanted, uh, and you're flying around the world, and you've got these big audiences. China, you're building your profile in North America in a big way as well. Um, tell me about the part that's hard. Um, I, like I don't mind people." saying oh you're not a good singer or you're not i don't like your music at least that they know they've heard all my like they heard my music it's just some some people they'll say i don't like you or i don't like what you wear or something like that it's just like it's the scrutiny that's hard for you yeah and also like yeah it's like i don't they, they'll say i don't like you but it's like i, I do you, do you know me you don't know me right. you just probably saw like an interview i did on tv or something i don't I, like i don't know but I still kind of ask myself myself all the time, like, why why do you think that? This is on the internet, I'm, I'm imagining. Yeah, saying yeah, this, it's right? on the internet. It's kind of before the, the subtext of this show. We've gone full circle. We Almost everything we've talked about today has has that subtext of the, the idea that in this new world of social media, mm -hmm. th this these are the realities. And one of them is if you become known like you have, you're going to get people saying things that don't feel uncomfortable, that don't feel comfortable to you and that you didn't invite. Right. Um, I... Yeah, I just I, I I want these people to know that you know there's better things in life to 
it's better to love than hate. If you have someone that you you love and you adore and you just love that person's music, go love that person's music and just don't bring this bad uh, negative energy to this world. Um, I have I have lots of fans who love me, so I should just focus on that. So thank you for bringing your positive energy to Studio Q today. Oh, thank you. Congratulations for Congratulations on your record. Thank Best you. of luck with all this. Wanting, to wanting. Wanting has been our Friday live guest performing throughout the show. Her debut album is called Everything in the World. It is out now. It's Friday. It's the end of the show. It's the end of the week.